Talk 11 Know the one true God Let the audience remain attentive to this conversation between the guru and disciple, in which pure knowledge is made very simple to understand by way of listening. Even a lifetime will not be enough if you conduct a search for pure knowledge in various scriptures you will only find that they disagree with each other. Some advocate karma, worldly and religious action, some yoga, some the worship of a deity, and some advocate worship of a whole host of gods. Then there will be someone who says that goddess Amba is greater or Khandoba is greater. This cannot be known unless a wrestling match or some contest is arranged between them. When even philosophical scriptures and mythological books do not agree, it is very difficult to arrive at a conclusion. Doubts only go on increasing as to which God is greater or which place is holier, such as Kashi or Pandapur. Dwarka or Rameshwar? There is no satisfactory answer, so how can one lifetime be sufficient to decide all this? Saint Tukaram said, Your whole family will go to hell if you do not visit Pandapur. If one visits the temple of a particular deity, the other deities will surely get angry. Is there anyone in this world who can visit all the holy places? All holy places are there only to understand the one God. The various cults and vows and opinions exist only so that people can realize Him. In this world there are many gods. Actually, there is a chaos of gods in our Indian culture. Whom can we call the real God? The methods of worship are so many that men have lost count. Whichever deity fulfills a man's wish becomes God for him. He takes it for granted that his is the real God. What sort of devotion is this? Some people worship numerous gods because they are useful for appeasing their hunger or for daily needs. The wife falls at the feet of her husband because he feeds her. He is the husband God. These are all false gods. Then along come the true gods. Satya Narayan, Lord Ganapati, and the like. Even sages are also considered God, so there is no firm decision as to who the real God is. There were quarrels among scriptures, mythological books, such as the Puranas and Vedas, and between pundits, yet there is no unanimous decision regarding the real God. Wherever you look, there are different gods in each house. After consuming a ton of food, the realized one observes the Ikadashi fast. The realized one may eat as much as he wants, and yet for him every day is the Ikadashi fast. This is a pun on the word Ikadashi, for Ika means one and Dasha meaning state. In the Mahabharata, Lord Krishna says that even if he has 16,000 queens, he is still a celibate. Lord Hanuman is an eternal celibate. In one incarnation, Rama's wife was kidnapped, and in another incarnation, Krishna kidnapped women. 
Rama and Krishna are both said to be incarnations of Lord Vishnu. If one does not steal and behaves like Rama in his life, then Krishna will be angry. Because of a need to call others names and give abuse, Avashnaiva does good when he censors Shiva's devotee. So be it. In short, a household may have just two people, but in the God's temple, a small temple of worship in the traditional Indian house, there are a number of gods such as Ganapati, Shankara, Amba. There is the bison, the tiger, and the dog. All of the gods have to eat from the same plate. This is a chaotic condition. Thus, many people get engrossed with gods, but only one in a thousand thinks of the real God. Are all of these gods going to help the world function? They are a product of our imagination. Even if one starts thinking about God, God still eludes him. Generally speaking, every person has a concept that God cannot be known. And this concept or idea creates pride in him. Some people wonder at the need for the methods of yoga or any such efforts. Therefore, a problem arises as to how God can be attained. This is why it is necessary to first know what or who God is. Static and dynamic activities continue incessantly in this world. There must be someone who is the doer. Someone moves the feet, moves the eyelids, and works day and night. He works, he walks, and he sits. So why should there be any objection in calling him God? It is God who says, I am born, I am dead. The one to whom the sun owes its brilliance is God. If the sun is shown to a chair, will that chair see the radiance of the sun or give radiance to the sun? Will a dead body bring luster to the sun? No. So if God is absent, who will talk of the sweetness or bitterness of food? Only if God is present is there joy or sorrow. Misery, heaven, and hell are all due to God's presence. The Lord is the self, the creator. All glory is due to his presence. Even the word God exists because of him. Because the Lord exists, the wife embraces the husband. If God leaves the body, no one wants a corpse, even if a request is made to keep it. When the Lord leaves, people are afraid to see the face of the corpse. If a dead person is seen in a dream, people call an exorcist. Because this body is perishable, it is non-God. Where the sun cannot reach, God reaches. This body is perishable, but the one who resides in the body is God. There is no consciousness of the world when the mind rests at night. Even if the wife is close by, there is no thought of her. God, as the worshiper, bathes God and offers him food and then eats it himself. Even if God, as the worshiper, says to the Lord, I offer you clothes, it will suffice. But this God worshiper must have real clothes, oil and soap. This God, as worshiper, needs to shave. Is there anyone who shaves him? What can the God who is perishable give the worshiper? If this God, as worshiper, is ill, the Lord will not get food to eat. The Omnipotent is God. 
If one goes to see God, he has no limbs, hands, or feet. If there is a pain in the stomach, who experiences it? The Lord is God not because he has no limbs. He is God because he knows that there is pain in the body. He has no limbs or mouth or stomach. He is not a hunchback. He is not the void. And he has no form. The Lord's true nature is known only to those who know. Brahman is not Lord Brahma, nor any other gods. The intellect is Lord Brahma. The inner mind is the inner consciousness that is Vishnu. And ignorance is Shiva. When we say that the mind and the intellect cannot know God, it means we cannot know him through mind or intellect.